everybody. Good to see you here tonight for a very special service. If you would, stand and join me for the call. Lord, Lord, pray together this evening. Lord, we come to you and we thank you for the beautiful day that you bless us with. And God, we thank you uh, for what this service tonight means. Lord, we lift up Robert and uh, Corey to you, Miss Alicia and Nicole, Lord, and we thank you that, uh, that in this time, in this season, Lord, you've called them to serve in the capacity of deacon. Uh, not of a power title, but of a servant title. And Lord, I thank you uh, for them. I thank you for their ministries. I thank you for their families. And Lord, so I'm asking uh, that tonight that your spirit will fall upon this place, specifically upon these uh, four individuals, uh, specifically again to Robert and Corey. Uh, Lord, I pray they'll just so soak this in this moment and savor the, the sweetness of how good it is uh, of knowing that, God, you've called us for a time, a uh, season such as this. Lord, we ask that you're glorified in our, in our songs. We ask that you're glorified in what is preached and what is taught and what is charged. And, God, may it be found in you and you alone. And may you receive all praise, honor, and glory for it. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's good to see you guys this evening as uh, this is a very special service uh, for Robert Mayo and Corey Edwards and uh, Miss Nicole and Miss Alicia. Uh, looking forward to this. And uh, anyone in the room that has been through an ordination service uh, on the seats, uh, we have seats. They used to make you sit on your hands or your knees, right? And uh, they come up and pray with you, but we're a little nicer uh, than they are back in the day. But understanding what this is all about, thank you for being here for them. Uh, thank you for encouraging them during this time. I know the family and friends are here, and we are thankful for that. Uh, one quick announcement when the service is over, uh, we will have a time of fellowship in our back building. Uh, we will have uh, deacons and ushers in this foyer to let you know how to get there. Uh, those of you who may not be here, if you have a few moments, I know some of you have traveled in. If you have a few moments to come to the back, we'd appreciate that as we uh, celebrate what the Lord's doing in their lives and uh, how God is going to use them to serve his kingdom and his church here at Flowood Baptist Church. But be praying for them. Uh, be praying for Miss Alicia. Be praying for uh, Nicole as well. And that God will move during this time and they'll serve uh, the best that they can for the furthest of the kingdom and impact in the kingdom. But we're glad that you are here and uh, looking forward to this service this evening. Two years that uh, that we've had ordination services, uh, it's been my pleasure to ask these guys that are being ordained, "What's your favorite hymn, or what would, what song would you like to hear?" And uh, this is one that uh, Brother Robert said that uh, meant a lot to him. It's called "When the Roll Is Called Up Yonder." Please stand with us. <laughs>
Amen. This is a very special night here at Flowood Baptist Church as we've come together to rejoice and to celebrate in the ordination or the appointing of Corey Edwards and Robert Mayo as deacons. These two men have been elected and confirmed to serve as deacon at Flowood Baptist Church. Corey Edwards and Robert Mayo, it is my responsibility on behalf of Flowood Baptist Church to charge you to be men of Christ-like character and to be found faithful to the call of Flowood Baptist Church to serve as deacons. I'm reminded of the words and the challenge that our Lord Jesus Christ gave to his disciples about being servants found in the book of Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 through 28. It said that Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of this world lord it over their people and officials flaunt their authority. Over, their, uh, over those under them. But amongst you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life a ransom for many. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be reminded through these words of what the Lord is calling us to do. It is in verse 25 uh, that the call of Jesus brings men together. It's important that you understand God's call upon your life. It may be different in a different area of service, but understand God's call upon your life, whether it be salvation, sharing the gospel, or serving. And then in verse 26 and 27, Jesus says, if you want to be a leader, you must be a servant. Flowood Baptist Church trust that you will lead as servants with a godly example through your worship, through your behavior, and through your priorities. And then in verse 28, Jesus himself said, He did not come to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. We trust that your godly service will be to any and to all, and that you will treat others as the Lord Jesus Christ treats you. Would you pray with me? Father, again tonight, we are so thankful for an opportunity to come and worship and celebrate who you are, but Lord, also in the work that you're doing. So we pray for these families that are here before us tonight and for so many who have faithfully served before us and still are blazing the trail. But God, I pray now that you bring us together as one body in unity, one voice serving you. Lord, help us along the way. This is our prayer in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Alicia and Nicole, it's my honor to get to give this charge to you as deacon wives. Um, Matthew 20, 28 says, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for man. Being a deacon's wife is much like being a minister's wife. It is not a glamorous title or position. It is not a position of loftiness. We are not any better or higher than anyone else. We are called to serve just as our husbands are called, just as Jesus did. Serving and being willing to serve should be in our makeup. We should desire to walk alongside our husbands in a way that shows the love of Christ as a couple and individually. Our job as wife of a minister or deacon is to serve, encourage, and set a godly example. You will be watched. There will be times that you will, be, that you will have the opportunity to share the gospel, even though you are not in the position of deacon or minister. We should be ready to show love and compassion to those around us. There will be times that your husband is called away and times he cannot share things with you. This is where your support, trust, and faithfulness will be tested. Be diligent in prayer for him, his ministry, for your marriage, and for your ministry together. Each of you have a God-given gift. Make sure it is used for Christ's honor and glory and not your own. Always remain humble, kind, loving, and supportive. You will be a leader and mentor to many people, whether directly or indirectly, just as your husband is. There will be times you will be weary, tired, and flat out exhausted. Remember Matthew 11, 28 through 30 says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
God will carry you through. He will sustain you. He will give you the strength to carry on. Know that you are never alone. We are all in this together, for God has called you to this task. 2 Corinthians 4.17 says, For this light, momentary affliction is preparing us an eternal weight of glory beyond all compassion. This weariness is only temporary and pales in comparison to the glories of heaven. God knows each one of us and has a special purpose for each of us. Isaiah 55.11 says, So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. No task too small, no task is too menial. If it's done for Christ and not for man, it will succeed and will not be done in vain. God chose you, the church has chosen you, and you will make a difference. As Esther 414 4, says, perhaps is this the moment for which you have been created. Good luck to you, Alicia and Nicole, and may God bless both of you. was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone
my chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing Shall soon dissolve like snow The sun forbear to shine But God has called me here below Will be forever thine Will be forever Ordination services are a time to soak it in, a time to rejoice that you are God's man and God's time to do what God wants you to do. And if I may begin this evening with a message geared toward Robert and, and Corey, I would begin this message with the foundation of this particular line that says, be God's man in God's place doing God's work. A deacon is called to serve. A deacon is not called to make decisions. A deacon is not called to run the pastor. A deacon is not called to run the local church. I believe Brother John gave you the charge found in Matthew chapter 20. And that charge, I believe, was explained to you in very much detail, emphasizing the call, emphasizing the example, and emphasizing the service that Jesus Christ has made abundantly clear for you and for me. This evening we're going to look at the spiritual qualifications set before us in Scripture. But may I remind you of something very important. In the world we live in today, churches are tempted to lower the spiritual qualifications at deacon at election time. We allow the world to come in and infiltrate the church and we wonder why the church is weak in the mindset of many we wonder why the church is wishy-washy on political issues. We wonder why the church is not focusing on what matters. It's because we're allowing the world to come inside the church instead of the church go out into the world. I believe this church understands that we should never fall to this temptation. I believe this church understands that God in his divine wisdom set the qualifications high because the work of a deacon is spiritual in nature and requires men who are mature Christians and understands the call set before you. This church, Flowood Baptist Church, this deacon council that met this afternoon has elected, confirmed, and is now ordaining you because we feel based on the qualifications found in Scripture and based on the qualifications found for your wives that we believe that you are called for such a season such as this. The Bible gives us numerous things to look at when we're looking at that of a deacon or a minister. And I believe there's five things that we can hang our hat on based on what the gospel teaches and the direction that the gospel wants us to go as deacons and deacons' wives. The first is a man of honest report, a man of good report. Acts chapter 6, verse 3 reads, Wherefore, brethren, look ye ye out among you seven men of honest report. If you look in the the book of Acts, we realize that these men were going to fulfill the role of deacon. And that the charge that's given in Acts chapter 6 verse 3 tells us that you to have a good reputation among those inside the church and those on the outside of the church. But this also tells us that there are going to be folks that may not like you. There are going to be folks that may not agree with you. And I simply say just join the crowd as the pastor in that same regard. But the reputation that we have before us, Robert, it's evident that you love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. It's evident that you love your wife like Christ loves the church. It's evident that you love your kids and your grandkids in a way that shows the way the Father loves you and for me. And for that, we would say that you are a man of honest or good report. Corey, we would say the same thing about you. 
And as you said in the moment of the council a moment ago, that the Lord has brought you to where you are. The Lord used your wife, so did Robert, to bring you where you are. And so the honest report before us that matters is that you love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You love your, your wife as Christ loved the church, and you love your kids the way that the Father loves us. A man of honest, good report. The second thing that we see in Acts chapter 6, verse 3, is a man full of the Holy Spirit. A man full of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 6, verse 3 continues with, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. When we think about this idea, there's so much in the world that is trying to consume us. There's so much in the world that we are allowing ourselves to become full of things that don't matter. We're being full of what the world says. We're being full of what man says. We're being full of what they are telling us a man should be. And the Bible makes it clear that we are to be full of the Holy Ghost, that we are to be full of wisdom. And when we understand what this means as a deacon, and for anybody for that matter, to be a God-called deacon and to fulfill the role of a deacon in a way that brings honor and glory to Jesus Christ, one must be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the definition of character. Reputation is what people think about you. Character is what God knows about you. Your number one attribute as a deacon in a local church is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to lead your home as you should. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to love your wife as you should. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to love those around you as you should. And this leads to a spiritual outlook in all situations. We must understand as pastors, ministers, and deacons that our goal is the betterment and the growth of the local church. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters except that the church is growing. Ultimately, the kingdom of God is growing, and that takes place because of dedication. There's two types of deacons, I believe. Not everybody's going to like this statement, but I say it almost every time. you got a God-called deacon, and you got a resume deacon. The God-called deacon says that you're called in the season as this to serve, to be a, a doulos, to be a bond servant of the master, to walk alongside, to see the fulfillment of the kingdom. A resume deacon is one that serves because it looks good on a resume. As a deacon, you are called to serve whether you're active or whether you're inactive. It's not a three-year rotation, all for a year for a sabbatical. You serve in a way that shows that you are dedicated to the growth of the church, that you desire to see the church persevere. And if you do not have that dedication, if you do not have the church's perseverance in the forefront, it's time that we evaluate our own life and see what God is calling us to do. Not only are you to be a man of a good report, and a man full of the Holy Ghost, you're to be a man full of wisdom and faith. These two go hand in hand. Acts 6, 3 says, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Verse 5 says, and the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Wisdom. So many times we think that People that have a lot of worldly knowledge possess godly wisdom. Worldly knowledge and godly wisdom is not the same thing. Wisdom by definition means, and I quote, the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. The quality of being wise. Being full of wisdom. What does that mean? We often say that it's someone over 60. We often say that it's someone that's been saved for a long period of time. Being full of wisdom is being able to discern right and wrong based on the inerrant Word of God. It's being able to say that there's no gray area for you and for me, for anyone in the room for that matter. This means that we allow the Word of God to be our moral compass. Our moral compass should be composed of the black and white found in the Word that has been inspired by God, that God gives us to be our guiding force. And the question is... Are you going to allow the Word of God to do that? Are you going to allow the Word of God to lead your life? Are you going to allow the Word of God to be at the forefront? And how do we do this? We simply say, Lord, 
I'm going to stir to your word that I might hide it in my heart, that I might not sin against thee, and that we ask in God to show us, to grant us what we need for wisdom, that if we lack that, we are granted that to make the right decision that glorify him. As a deacon, you're going to be asked to make decisions at times. You're going to be asked for wisdom in certain situations. You're going to be asked for your opinion in certain situations. And I encourage you by telling you this, your opinion never trumps the Word of God. Your opinion or what you think about a situation never trumps the inerrant Word of God. And as we understand wisdom and we understand that faith, the idea in this moment is, is very cliche, but you are putting your faith in the chair that you're sitting in that is going to hold you up. We may say that's simple, but that's how simple it is when we're in the will of God, that we know that he's good, we know that he is faithful. And living a life of faith in Christ means that you're willing to risk it all for the glory of God. If the Lord says go, you will go. If the Lord says stop, you will stop. Your faith will be tried. Your faith will be tested. Miss Alicia and Nicole, the same goes for the two of you as well. As we think about this as a deacon and a spouse or a minister and a a spouse, we need to be reminded of the encouragement of the local body of believers. We need to be reminded that we are in this together, that it's not a competition, that it's not who can outdo who, but that we can be strengthened by your ministerial staff. You can be strengthened by your other deacons. I pray that the other men in this room who fill this particular role will walk alongside you, encourage you, and allow your faith to grow exponentially over the next several years. The men of this church, the idea of a deacon as we discussed in the deacon council of this particular church, changed a couple of years ago. If you are a guest here, we changed our bylaws. And I believe we allowed our bylaws to be more aligned with Scripture, that a deacon body is not to be the governing body. The deacon body is not to be the decision-making body. That the deacon body is called to serve. The deacon body is called to see the Great Commission fulfilled. You are called in this moment to serve and to serve only. You're not called to make the difficult decisions. Yes, we will petition your advice. We will petition your wisdom. You are called to serve the local church, ultimately to serve your King of Kings and your Lord of Lords. Not only are you to be a good report, not only are you to have faith, but you're to be a man of grave image. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Likewise must the deacons. That means everything in verses 1 through 7 of the bishop. It doesn't mean that you read verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and then just go to 8. You take everything in verse 7, and then it goes right into the deacon. There's two positions in the church, a pastor, bishop, overseer, and a deacon. Here it is. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double tongue, not given to wine, not greedy of filthy liqueur. You have a purpose. In this time, your purpose is to serve God and to serve his church as a deacon of Flowood Baptist Church. May you understand the spirituality of what 1 Timothy is telling us. Our lives must show that we are willing to carry the weight. Our actions must show that we are willing to serve when no one else sees. Our speech must show that we are seasoned with salt. Everything about us, everything about us, even though we will fall, should be centered around being more like Christ. Finally, this evening, I want to leave you with this thought. A man who possesses a Christian family and one wife. Verse 11 says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husband of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. I say oftentimes, a wife can do one of two things. She can make your ministry flourish, or she can cause your ministry to fail. And there are folks in this room that can tell you that, that sometimes some of the biggest problems that come in the local church is because the deacon had a conversation with their wife and their wife shared it throughout the church. Not everybody agrees with that, but I can tell you that that happens. Alicia, Miss Alicia, and Nicole, may you be reminded that you're to be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. Corey and Robert, your priorities must be God, your wife, Your kids, 
deacon of Flowood Baptist Church. God, your wife, kids, and deacon of Flowood Baptist Church. So many times we allow things to get in our way from fulfilling our first calling. Our first calling is to be a husband. Our second calling is to be a father or a grandfather. Our third calling is to be a deacon of a local church. May you be reminded in times like this that your first calling, and I'm preaching to myself here, let me make this clear, that your first calling is your home. Your home. The way that you love your wife, the way that you love your kids is more applicable for you in this moment. Corey, Mr. Robert, I know that your kids are grown and gone, but you have your grandkids down here with you, but you understand the importance of this message. We are called to love God. We're called to love our families. And I, as your pastor, will never, ever ask you to put your role as a deacon in front of your family. Never. Never. If I do, you have my permission to call me on it. Because I understand the importance of the family. But I also will say this, the other side of the same coin. I will ask, however, that you do not use your family as an excuse to not fulfill your role as a deacon. As we wrap up this time of the message and before the laying on of hands, Corey and Robert, as a deacon, there are people within this church who are going to expect you to fix certain things or do certain things. Let me tell you by the power that I have vested in me per se is that there are some things that you cannot fix and there are some things that you cannot do. This does not mean that you wash your hands of the situation before you. It doesn't mean that you turn a blind eye to it. No, what it means is that you as a deacon are willing to pray for God to be glorified during things that need fixing and need doing. The second thing I want to tell you is that this position is not about power. This position is about serving. May the Lord use you to serve in a mighty and powerful way. Finally, as the pastor of this church, I'm thankful for the two of you. I know that I, Robert, I could be your son age-wise. Corey, I know that we're about the same age. But I say that to say this. It's evident that God is working in your life individually. It's evident that God is working in your life, Robert, and serving in the capacity that you serve. It's evident that God is working in your life, Corey, and serving in the capacity that you're serving. Nicole and Miss Alicia, it's evident, it's evident that God has called you for a time such as this. And may you be reminded, again, as the pastor of this church, I will go to battle for you. I will go to war for you. I will not leave you out to dry. I am here to encourage you to love you, and to guide you. And I'm simply asking you to do the same thing. I'm asking you to do the same thing. And in a time of transparency, as I said in the deacon council, there are men in this room that have walked in my office behind me when I've taken a binder and slung it across the desk because I felt like the church missed it. And I remember this one particular deacon who's soft-spoken, and he walks in and he says, Bobby, are you okay? And I turned around and said, does it look like I'm okay? And in that moment, I was not okay, but that simple touch on the left shoulder made it everything okay. I can remember sitting in Steak and Shake in Sevierville, Tennessee, almost eight years ago, and the call came in from the chairman of deacons that we had been elected, our chosen pastor and pastor's wife of this church, and I remember saying that I'm not coming for less than 90%. More people voted to change the bylaws than for me to be the pastor. 88% came. That deacon on the phone says, and I quote, Bobby, you're the guy. Our minister of music sat across from me in Steak and Shake and said, you're the guy. These two guys are what it means to be servants of God. I can remember sitting in the living room of a couple of our deacons in this, in this particular building tonight saying, I want to quit. I want to give it up. I want to walk away. But these guys heard my heart. They heard my hurt, and they offered a word of encouragement. Without them, I wouldn't be standing here today. I say that to say this. There are men in this room that are in your corner. There are men in this room that want to see you succeed. There are also people out there that want to see you fail. They want to say, Coach or Deacon or Robert or Deacon, you're not supposed to talk like that. You're not supposed to act like that. You're not supposed to do this or to do that. And I'm all for iron, sharpening iron. But may you, be, may you be reminded, and may you have rest found in simply this. 
that God called you, not man. God called you, not man. The last thing I'll tell you is I can remember standing behind this pulpit January the 3rd of 2018, scared to death. As a 29-year-old pastor following a 31-and-a-half-year tenured pastor, and if you've been in church life for any amount of time, you know the odds are stacked against you. And I can remember the phone call that my brother gave me, my Paul, to his Timothy. And my brother said these words, Bobby, the same God that called Billy Graham called you. Go and serve. Now, I'm not saying I'm Billy Graham. I'm far from it. But what I am saying is this, that God called you to serve as a deacon. The church confirmed you, but the calling of God trumps the confirming of the church. The calling of God trumps the expectations of man. The calling of God trumps the times that you want to give up. The calling of God trumps the times that people are looking at you and wondering why you do the things that you do. The calling of God is why we do what we do. And I pray the only way that Bobby knows how to say it is that you'll get in the wagon Allow God to lead you where he wants you to lead you. That you will be used to bring glory to his church, to impact his kingdom, and for his name to be lifted high. This is a service that allows the church to know, first and foremost, that we believe in God's eyes that you are God's man in God's place doing God's work. And for that I am grateful. I am thankful that you answered the call. I am thankful that the church put their faith in you. I understand the Bible says put your faith in no man, but you understand the church believed that you were the men for the calling at the time and the season as such as this. Just serve and serve well. We're going to have a time of laying on of hands. I'm going to ask you two men, if you will, make your way to the two seats here before me. And I'm going to ask any ordained man in the room who would like to line up to my left And after our ministerial staff makes their way through, we're going to come by and and pray over these two guys and offer a word of encouragement to their wives. And remember, and simply remember this, God called them. God is directing them. May we allow God to use them in a way that brings honor and glory to Jesus during this time of the laying on of hands.
Stand up for just a moment, please. Left them on the hot seat a little bit longer, make them nervous. Now, here, here we uh, The church has given them a, a couple of books regarding what it means to be a deacon and the ordination certificate uh, signed by the men that participated in the ordination council. And uh, so we're looking forward to serving with you guys. And we had right at 30 guys here at 4 o'clock this afternoon uh, that walked through the ordination council. And that shows the testimony. Brother Keith leaned over to me and says uh, that we're lucky, they're lucky what we have here because not every church has this amount of folks that show up uh, for something like this to pray over you. And I know family and friends are here uh, on both sides. And so real quick, two quick things housekeeping-wise. If you're staying for the fellowship, uh, if you want to go ahead and make your way to the fellowship hall, building D there in the back, Uh, and start eating, you can. Uh, We're going to ask the men that participate in the ordination council uh, and are prayed over him uh, to gather here on the platform real quick to take a picture, and then we'll take pictures of the families that those of y'all may want pictures and get it to you. So I'm going to pray to dismiss us. Those of you who participate in the ordination council are prayed over him. If you'll go ahead and scoot up here to the front, uh, and we're going to take a quick picture and go from there. Let me pray, and then we are good to go. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for this day. Thank you for Robert. Thank you for Corey. Thank you for uh, God just calling them for a time such as this to serve your church here at Flowood Baptist Church. Lord, we pray that you'll protect them, that you'll put a hedge of protection around them, that they will serve in a way that brings honor and glory to you. God, thank you for their wives. Thank you for Miss Alicia. Thank you for Nicole. Pray that you'll bless them as they walk through this time of life, that you'll be glorified in all things. We pray this, we believe this, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right.